My name is Mark Ripito. I'm the author of Starting Strength and Practical Programming for Strength Training. We're here at my gym, Wichita Falls Athletic Club, and I've been in this business for 37 years. Barbells are superior to machines because barbell exercises work more muscle mass over a longer range of motion and allow you to therefore lift more weight and thus get stronger than anything we have invented as far as machine training goes. When you are lifting a barbell, when you are standing on your feet, moving a barbell through the air, you can fall down. The fact that you don't fall down is an aspect of barbell training that can't be duplicated by a machine. Strength is the basis of our interaction with the environment. Strength is the production of force against an external resistance. In the real world, when we produce force against an external resistance, we're standing on our feet when we do it. And if you stand on your feet and train the production of force standing on your feet with balance, an inherent component of the movement pattern, then balance is improved along with the production of force. And balance is an inherent uh, uh, condition under which force production occurs. Barbell training more closely approximates the actual application of force in the real world than any other training modality that we've got. Men ought to be stronger because your genetics are geared toward strength. We have evolved to be strong. Everything about our physiology developed back in, the, in antiquity when uh, if you were strong, you got to survive, and if you weren't, you didn't. And just as a, it, just to respect your genetics, make the most out of them. By being in the gym business for 30 years, by showing everybody that came into the gym how to squat and do the other barbell exercises. Everybody that joined this gym since it was, since it was started in 1984 has learned how to squat as a result of joining the club. And during that period of time, I've learned quite a bit about how to do that. And I've also learned quite a bit about how to program those lifts for the uh, greatest amount of progress in the shortest amount of time because when people are paying you they want results for their money and there's a, a specific way to get the best results and that is to get as strong as fast as possible and the way that's accomplished is all in the book but but that's how the, the program developed out of commercial necessity when I take a, a person that comes in the gym Day one, we write their, their numbers down. Day 30, we get the increase. The primary lifts are the squat, uh, the, the press, which is sometimes referred to as the shoulder press or the overhead press. We just call it the press, the deadlift, the bench press, and the power clean, and the power snatch, the, the two Olympic, the power variants of the two Olympic lifts. We've gotten very good at teaching people how to do all of these, all of these movements in a short period of time. We've developed a method to teach you how to teach people how to do the movements, and that's what we uh, sell in our seminars. Uh, there are a group of us who have always stayed with barbells because they work better and we like stuff that works better and it harks back to a, an older time when things were more honest and, and less superficial. The fitness industry, as I said, is predicated on the machine-based model because the fitness industry is a sales industry. It is not a strength industry. If you can take a person off the street and put them onto the exercise floor and hire a kid for minimum wage to show him how to use the machines. That's more profitable than having to have someone with years and years of experience in barbell training to use uh, barbells with this, this same individual. 
Even though the barbells are incredibly cheaper, volume is the basis of the business, and volume demands uh, low overhead in terms of the people you're hiring and a short experience in terms of the people you run through the exercise floor. Machines fit that bill and barbells don't. Starting Strength was, start. we started the book in 04 and it was published in 05. It's now in its third edition. We're coming up on a 10 year anniversary here in June. And sales have increased every month since it was published. And we've sold in excess of 300,000 copies, the first, second, third edition, and the electronic edition of the, uh, of the third. We've sold in excess probably up to about 325,000 copies of that one title now. Practical Programming has sold in excess of 100,000 copies. Of all the four titles, we've sold a half million books. The more people that do this program and immediately achieve, uh, immediately achieve results from the program, the more uh, buzz there is about how effective it is. They watch the person get stronger, they become interested because strength is important. This program has an appeal because it is the most ironclad method for increasing strength in the shortest period of time in the world. It doesn't matter how old, how young, how infirm, male, female, young, old, sick, healthy, this way always works. We've got a 90-year-old, 91-year-old lady in here that's doing her version of starting strength. Her walker is in the closet. It, it is awesome. It's a, it's a neat deal. To, especially the older you get, the more important this becomes. People in the strength sports successfully pursue careers that last decades without doing more than eight or nine exercises. Exercise variety is the wrong variable. That's fashionable now. Exercise with the correct exercises using volume, intensity, and rest as the variables are the correct way to approach a strength program. A heavy deadlift is always pulled like that no matter what you try to do.